All right, welcome back to Autodesk Maya. In this tutorial, we're going to create a shadow matte layer, basically for compositing. So I have here um, my spaceship here in the corner, and basically I want to do something like this, where I composite it in this uh, desert landscape, which comes from pexels.com. Um, so here, decided to use that photo. Um, I have done my own compositing with my own photos. This is from uh, Salt Lake City. Same spaceship with some uh, extra painting and texturing in Photoshop with the shadow, but the shadow mat is the deal here. You can see this nice cast shadow being uh, cast on the ground here. And we want to be able to do that in uh, Maya. So let's check out how to do this. Switch over to Maya here. And um, so in Maya, we have um, basically uh, the spaceship. So now what I need to do is basically bring in my photo background. So you need to click on um, Perspective Camera here, and um, basically you can scroll down and open up the Environment tab here uh, so at the bottom, and then click Create, and you basically create an image plane. And then um, in here you have a folder icon you can basically click on and basically choose the image and that you want to put in there. And again, I've um, downloaded this from Pexels. Pexels is really great about these um, open source photos and this comes from uh, Pixel Bay Pixel Bay so thank you uh, Pexels for uh, basically providing open source uh, photos for uh, commercial and uh, educational purposes which is really nice so when I clicked on that basically brought in here and I kinda already basically thought about where I want the ship to be but basically you can see here I'm just basically rotating and I have the grid here I could pre pretty much put the grid wherever I want and um, you know kind of line up the spaceship kind of where I want it to be in here in the scene. So um, basically then I would just create a plane and I'd create my light kit uh, setup. So basically right now I'm going to go to the Arnold tab and I'm going to add the uh, the sundial light, the sky dome light here. And in here um, I'm going to click on it and uh, there's a couple of little settings here I like to change. First off, I'm going to increase the samples to three eventually. I think right now, though, um, since we're basically uh, just doing this for the tutorial, for per speeding up purposes, I'm not going to up the sample. But normally, I would change this to three. And then um, the other thing, I would probably increase the exposure. I would start with a value of one, and then I would turn off the camera. I'm going to do that right now, just putting a zero there. And so uh, now, if I click on the render tab here, You'll see here when I click render, there we go. It looks like our uh, Maya was a little bit of falling asleep there. Now, uh, because I turn off the camera, I, the photo actually looks pretty decent in here. If I had the camera on, I would be kind of washed out uh, in the background here. Now what I need is the, the shadow captured here. So what I'm going to do is just minimize this and um, it seems like Maya is doing some, whoop. Looks like it's trying to render again. So I'm going to minimize this and then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the poly modeling shelf and click on a plane here and basically I just need to scale the plane so I'm going to immediately hit the R key and scale it up. Now what's really important here is if I'm going to have a shadow looking at the light source here the light kind of coming from the top left here casting downwards. If I left it about this size the shadow would be cropped off. You need to make sure your plane extends past the the, uh, the area that you want the render to be. So I'm going to go ahead and scale this up quite large, make sure I get the whole shadow there. Okay, That's really important. Now I have to add the material. Now I already have textures on my uh, spaceship, but basically I want to right click on this plane and um, right click and assign it a new material. And so I'm going to go to the Arnold shader and it's the AI uh, shadow matte materials I'm going to add on there and by default the settings are pretty good overall there's additional settings in here if you're interested in the specular to um, get reflection from the environment and stuff you can choose indirect specular and you can also get indirect diffuse you can check that little box there I'm going to leave just the default settings right now and I'm going to click on the render again and see the results here so you can see here the shadow, and uh, it looks like it's, it's showing up on here. Okay, so now I want to adjust the lighting, and you 
know, figure out how the shadow would, would match. So what I can do is um, I can click on the sky dome light, and the thing that you're going to change in here is, uh, let's see here, it's the physical sky. You click on this icon here. You're basically going to change these two values, these um, azimuth and the elevation. So the azimuth, if, if I go into render and show the so I go ahead and hit the play button. You can kind of see it's kind of updating here in the scene uh, in real time. And this azimuth, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, it's azimuth uh, value here. It's kind of like rotating the sun. So in terms of direction. So you can see here, if I move it to the right more, the light's going to be coming from the opposite direction. So I kind of want to rotate it to uh, somewhere around here, I think like there maybe. Now the elevation has to do with like in terms of the length of the sun. So if it's lower to the ground or higher to the ground. So if I have it closer like this, you can see I get a really long shadow where if I have it, you know, up higher, basically around 90 degrees or so is going to be basically the sun directly above. Right. So, uh, Basically, that's what I want to do is kind of get the sweet spot between these two to kind of match the look of the shadow that's in there. Now, um, basically, with this rotation, I kind of want it to go down a little bit on the slope. So I'm kind of rotating about there. Kind of feel like that looks pretty good. And I like the, um, the way it kind of swoops downwards. I feel like that actually looks pretty cool. It's not exactly like the one I had before, but it's okay. I mean, this looks pretty good. So at this point, I can hit the stop button. Now, uh, for my actual final renders, what I would do is first uh, hide the background here. So if I grab my image plane here, I could turn off the uh, color grain and the alpha grain so that I get zero basically for transparency here. Because if I can now render out, you'll see um, the environment will be gone, but the spaceship will be there along the shadow. You just won't be able to see the shadow because it'll be, you know, dark. So I'll just give a sec here for it to render. And you can see here it, it's real low resolution right now, 640 by 480. So this isn't the correct resolution or anything, but you can kind of see now this is the setup that you'd want to render out. Um, so if I actually save this out, it would actually render out properly. So the only thing next I have to do is um, basically up my resolution and up my lighting. So if I go to my sky dome lighting again, I would up the samples to three. Uh, if I scroll up to here, I would increase this to three and the shadow would look a lot better that way. I, I could finesse the lighting if I want. I feel like it needs to be a little bit brighter. Maybe I need to increase this to 1.5 or something like that. If I do something like this, I would actually want to do it in the, um, uh, looks like 1.5. Let's try that just out of curiosity. Uh, what would happen here is I'd want to do it at the low res, not the high res here. So I'd want to do it at this lower resolution before I up upscale the resolution because it's going to take a lot longer for it to render. You can see right now it's taking about six seconds to render. Once the render uh, starts rendering, for some reason I'm not getting a little bit of a lag delay here. So here you can see with the, the render time is six seconds and the shadow or the highlights are just a little bit bouncier on here. I kind of like this a little bit better. So uh, the 1.5 I think actually looks pretty good on here. So the final thing I would do is click on the render settings here and um, basically want to match the resolution of my final image here. So if I go to Photoshop here and go to image size, uh, it's 7,360 7, pixels for the width. So I can do that in Maya and come in here and just type in 7360 and then the height uh, if I go back to Photoshop is 4912 essentially so uh, 4912 yeah 4912 kind of put that in here 4912 and then before I actually render it I would close out, and this is just a master render. If I did want to do render passes, I could definitely do that also, but for right now, I just kind of want to give you a quick overview. 
the first thing I would do is click on this little icon here and this little guy, and this will give you a rendable area. So um, here, and you can see here, it doesn't change much. This is pretty much where I want this ship to be in the composition. And at this point, I would click on the render. Um, but it's going to take a long time to render out. So basically, at the end here, uh, I've actually rendered out some other images here. You can see on this one, I rendered out a, a layer, and then here's another one. I rendered. I did basically did two passes. You can see this one doesn't have the shadow. So to do that, all you got to do is select your plane here, and then um, hit the H key. That's to hide it. If I hit Shift H, it would bring it back. So you just have to make sure it's selected in your outliner here. You can see in the outliner here. So if I hit H, it hides it, and then I render that out as a separate pass. And so um, by doing that, I can use this as a mask. So basically, in the layers group here. I've combined both these images together and essentially I've, I've actually shown the mask that's on that layer itself. So this layer here, the top layer, if I look at the mask, uh, by control clicking on it, I, I create this mask. Um, you can see it there and I can control click to take it turn off. On this layer, if I control click on it, you can see that it's got some reflection stuff that's happening with the matte layer. And so you're going to get some of that to happen in your shadow. You can always mask it off um, by doing that. So if it, if it really bothers you on there. Um, but basically, I can look at that on the green layer and see how it looks. And so basically, that's what I did is I brought in here as a group. And uh, I did a couple of things. I basically used this layer, uh, the top layer, as a mask to, to basically... Um, uh, have a color overlay on the shadow layer and you can see if I just isolate this layer the color overlay is affecting the ship too on this layer but on this layer it's basically um, just the ship itself so by using this mask on this other one there's a little bit of difference you can kind of see like the reflections and the shadows in the ship so all I do is control click on this one and on this one which does have the shadow on it I just basically clicked on the square circle to add the, add the shadow or the mask here. If I delete the mirror mask, you can kind of see what it looks like here. But once I add that mask, the shadow, uh, the darker shadow goes away, and this one uh, is revealed. So basically, at that point, I can come in here and adjust my shadow layer, which has a color overlay. So you can kind of see it here if I turn it on and off. And if I double click on it, all I did was click on color overlay, and I clicked in here and I picked this color here, clicked OK, and I could set this to whatever blend mode I want, if I want to be on normal, but uh, multiply works pretty good for shadow layers, a little darker, and it's got that kind of nice warm brown uh, of the sand here. Of course, you can do more compositing in here, ultimately at the end, to kind of make this, you know, feel like in the scene, maybe I would take elements of the sand and put onto the ship here uh, through painting, and that would be very easy to do, just add a new layer and basically just um, select some of these areas of the sand and basically put that on there. Um, you can even do it through a mask, which is kind of nice. All right, so that's basically uh, how you create a shadow mat in Maya. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Until next time, cheers.